Hello, welcome to the video on soil. This is part of chapter 12, food soils and pests. And so we're gonna begin with soil and soil has a mixture of two major parts and those are the geological and biological components. So biological would be the living material. It refers to anything either living or uh, dead that's in the soil. The geological, this would be the rocks and stuff, the sand that's breaking down. And so these two things combine to form soil. And this picture here in the middle, these are a lot of different types of soil. And, and so a lot of people think soil, it's just dirt. There's nothing really special to it, but there are a lot of different types of soil and, and they're good for different types of things. So we'll talk about what soil is, how does it form, how do we use it, and uh, where does it come from in this video series. So the origin of soil, there are five major things that we need to be aware of for how soil forms. And I'm gonna go into each of these in detail. So the first one of those is the parent material. And so the parent material is essentially gonna be rocks. It's where the soil comes from. Something comes and breaks the rock in half, right? And then we end up with two smaller rocks. And uh, eventually those two smaller rocks get hit with something, whether it's rain or snow or, um, an animal that breaks them up uh, and they break again and so on and so forth until we end up with these tiny little pieces of them and those are going to be a major component of the soil and so they influence a lot of things in the soil they influence the color of the soil if we've got something that's really iron rich parent material then it would have that very uh reddish kind of red brown color if we have something like um, limestone, which is calcium carbonate, it's usually lighter in color, and so you'd have a, a lighter colored soil. It also influences the texture. The texture comes from the size of the particles. So how much did that parent material get weathered down? That will help determine the texture. And then a really big factor here is the mineral composition. And so the parent material, whatever minerals, um, calcium is an important one, potassium is an important one, phosphorus, fates are important ones. Whatever uh, minerals are found in the parent material can typically be found within the soil that, that they uh, play a role in forming. Another important thing is climate. Climate is extremely important in this and I have it written as the most important one. So there are two parts to the climate. We talk about temperature and we talk about precipitation. When we have a high temperature, the decay of the biological, right, the leaves and the grass and things, the biological uh, is sped up and so we increase the rate at which the soil forms because we're getting more of that organic component being put into it. If we have a higher precipitation that's going to move those minerals and nutrients around quicker and so if that precipitation is really high it can actually flush them through the bottom down through the bottom of the soil or it could wash them over the surface before they have a time to deposit within the soil. And so these two things, climate and precipitation or temperature and precipitation play huge roles in, in how the soil forms. And, and so ideally we want to have a, a warm temperature and where we can support a lot of organic growth and where those things can die and decay and deposit um, their nutrients and their minerals and, and their matter to form the next layer of soil. And we want something that doesn't really have that much precipitation because we want to hold on to those nutrients in the soil. Relief also plays a really important uh, role in here. And this is kind of the topographical uh, region of the graph. What, is the, what does the map look like? What does the land look like? And so um, it'll influence how much soil there is in a given area. And so sloped land, like we've got in the background here, that is gonna uh, be a risk for erosion and soil is gonna run off of that and be deposited at lower levels. And so here we go. We've got some freshly exposed rock in the background here from a glacier retreating. And so this is a location where we have primary succession, if you remember that term. That, uh, that area does not have any soil because it's been ripped away by the glacier as it goes. In the front of this picture down here, we have a lot of soil, very thick, very rich layer of soil. And that's because this river is depositing sediments over time into this kind of grassland area. And so we get a great soil profile down here uh, and an area up here where there's no soil at all. And it's due to the relief, the shape of the land. And so as the glacier retreated through here, it stripped it away. Um, organisms play a, a huge role in the soil. So there's microscopic organisms, bacteria, um, 
especially that's going through that decomposition and breaking down the plant uh, matter or that organic material, whether it's waste from animals or, or dead dying plants. And these things all work together to break that into smaller and smaller pieces. And it deposits the nutrients and, and the atoms and molecules from that organic matter in, into the soil where they can be reused and recycled through the various cycles we talked about in previous sections. Um, and so that's the organism's role here. The last one is time. And so one thing to remember is that soil develops very, very slowly. Uh, just a simple inch of soil can take a, an awfully long period of time bigger than the human scale. And so this would not be a renewable resource according to our definition that it can be replenished in one human's lifetime. So it takes a long time. And it, of course, like we said earlier, depends on the temperature and precipitation. If you've got a really young soil, like what was left behind from that glacier in the previous picture, you get something very similar to the parent material. And so as the soil forms on that rock uh, face, we would probably see it having a lot of similar properties to the rocks itself. And in fact, it would probably look like gravel. As they get older, we get more nutrients deposited, more um, erosion, more plants are, are breaking down, so we have more organic layers. Uh, the layers of the soil, we will no longer be referring to them as layers. They're actually called horizons. And these are the different horizons that we need to be aware of. The first horizon, this is one you see um, in tropical and temperate regions, not so much in Arctic ones. It is all organic stuff, right? And so this is living or dead organic, I guess I need a G there, uh, organic material. And uh, it's usually a pretty small layer, but these are the plants, the grass, the trees, the leaves that they've dropped, the insects that are living on, on top here. And so that is the organic. It, it has not fully decomposed yet and become soil. The A horizon is directly below it. This is topsoil. And so when you go to Lowe's and buy a bag of topsoil for your garden, this is the kind of stuff that they're selling you. Um, it's got hummus in it. And this is not the hummus that you put on your pretzels or your chips or whatnot. This is organic matter. So the organic material from above has broken down into this organic matter. It's not distinguishable anymore. Like you're not going to see the banana peel that might have been in the O horizon. It's broken down as it's moved down a layer. And we also see the inorganic minerals here as well. And so you get some sand particles, some clay particles, some silt particles mixed in with it. This is where we have a lot of life. Right, the worms will live in this layer. We got roots growing down through it. Um, so this is the kind of the really rich stuff. This is where you want to grow your plants. The E horizon is called the zone of leaching. And what happens here is as it rains or as water lands on the soil, it carries nutrients down through the soil. Things that are water soluble, especially like phosphates and nitrates, um, are going to be carried down through the A horizon and into the E horizon. And in the E horizon, um, those materials are going to be able to pass on through. And so they're going to keep on going down into our next one, which is the B horizon. Uh, this is where they accumulate. And so there are kind of two words to be aware of. I'll bring them up a little bit later. But there is eluviation, spelled with an E, which happens in the E horizon. And you have illuviation with an I, same endings to these words. But eluviation is the movement of the materials downward. And illuviation is kind of the accumulation of them, the buildup of them. And so down here is where we will find a lot of uh, our, our minerals, those types of things. The metals um, are going to be deposited here. They can't transmit further down. The sea horizon has very little organic stuff, pr practically zero organic material, and it's kind of just the broken down parent material. And then the R horizon would be that parent material, the bedrock. And so have you ever seen those like Alaskan gold digger shows where they mine the earth and they're always looking for um, the honey pot or, or where the richest stuff is, the bedrock uh, to find the gold. And that's because that gold alluviates down through the soil with the water, they're finding very, very small pieces, and it illuviates in this B uh, horizon, right on the edge, in fact, of that C horizon. So when they find the big chunks of bedrock, the gold sits right on top of them. And so they're very valuable for them to run through their machines. 
A uh, couple physical properties to be aware of for soil. One of them is the porosity, and so that's how quickly water drains down through it. And so you can see uh, our different components of soil, what it looks like for each of them. Gravel is a very large particle. Right, see how big this thing is down here? And so there's a lot of gaps when you put a lot of those pieces together. And so water runs very freely through it, right? So if you pictured a very large ball, like a basketball, and you put a bunch of them in a bucket or something, there'd be a lot of space between the basketballs because there's such a large particle. Sand is a little bit smaller, so let's picture maybe baseballs in the same bucket. The space between each of those baseballs shrinks, and so the water runs through, but not quite as quickly. Um, and then the particles get even smaller. Clay is super tiny particles, very, very fine particles where you wouldn't see uh, any gaps between them. And so they're very watertight. Uh, percolation is, is what happens in your coffee maker, right? The water runs through the coffee rinds and it deposits the minerals or the, the caffeine and the coffee flavoring into the water below. And so this measures kind of how the water sweep, uh, seeps through the soil and deposits the, the nutrients from the parent material uh, in those soil layers. Typically going to deposit those in the B and the C areas where we have that illuviation happening. Soil triangles. So this is a very uh, useful device here. We're going to use them in class for sure on how to determine the uh, type of soil. And so you see on the triangle here, there's some shaded areas. Those represent each of the different types of soil. And our three major components, sand, clay, and silt, would be used to find what type of soil we have. And so if we found that we had 65% sand, we'd find 65, and we're going to be looking somewhere in this direction on that red line. 10% clay, and so if I've got 10% clay, this is my line going across here, and you can see we're already meeting in one spot. And then our last part here, 25% silt, and so silt is here, 25% silt and voila there's our spot and so this would be an example of sandy uh, loam and so we can use these percentages of the particles to determine how uh, our soil looks and if i'm going to put in my arrows here we always read it to the left um, and so that's how you would use the soil triangle soil and its uses so how do we use the soil uh, we use it for a lot of different things. Some of these uses can degrade the soil uh, through something called erosion, which is not a very good thing for soil. We can also deplete the nutrients, which would be why we have to end up using fertilizers. Um, and we can also dry them out, which is why a lot of times we have to irrigate and bring water into the soil. So, and so all these things kind of affect um, soil quality and in some places soil is kind of abused and not not treated well and, and uh, the resource is depleted and so we can degrade it by erosion uh, and through other means and so these are kind of how soil gets degraded one of them is topsoil is removed by planting a lot of our crops are annual crops which means they need replanted corn for example or rice really big staple crops worldwide uh, these annual crops once they have been planted and harvested, they need to be replanted again the following year. And so in order to do that, we have to plow and till the land to open it up and accept the seeds for the next generation. And so that uh, really loosens the soil and it can also uh, lead to that heavy erosion because it's getting washed away as it gets looser. Uh, when we take away vegetation, we lose the roots that hold the, the soil in place. And so that also causes erosion. Compacting is soil degradation. This is trampling, um, driving vehicles over it, that is going to squish it together and it's going to remove the space between the soil particles. And so if you remove the space, you're reducing how the water flows through. And so you can cut off nutrients getting down. Um, if we dry it up, the organisms that are degrading the or organic matter aren't going to be able to survive. And so you're going to reduce that um, decay of the organic matter and can lead to nutrients being depleted. Same thing if we're harvesting really nutrient rich crops and moving them off off the, the land, uh, those nutrients aren't available for the next generation. Um, some areas that are at risk for soil erosion are here on the map. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but take a look at it. The Silty River, this would be a river that is picking up a lot of soil from uh, nearby eroded areas. And this map here has got the areas for our soil concern. If you take a look here at the United States, this portion here well, that's the breadbasket of the United States where we grow our wheat, our corn, 
um, and our soybeans, a lot of our food staples and also some transportation staples with biodiesel from corn, uh, that soil is a concern for degradation and it's for numerous reasons which we had on that, that last slide. Um, and that's where we're going to end with soil. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please come tomorrow with questions and uh, be prepared to discuss. Thank you for watching.